Hello, my name is Victor. Today I'm going to talk about my early days with the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you saw my previous blog about how the Holy Spirit and I first made contact, the Holy Spirit first made contact with me, you know, he gave me an answer in second grade math class. Well, this video, this blog is going to pick up right where that one left off. So, uh, that same day that the Holy Spirit had given me an answer to a math problem in class, that same day I ran home, you know, I, I, and I was so excited. And I ran home and I threw my books down and I went straight to where my mom kept the Bible and I grabbed a hold of this Bible and uh, because I wanted to know what God was like, okay? And uh, see, when you're seven years old, uh, some parts of life are very simple, you know, cause and effect. Cause and effect are very simple, you know, or they were for me when I was seven. You know, I knew that if I behaved in one way that it would make my parents behave in a, in a certain way too. You know, if, if I did good things, you know, they would be happy and they would smile, you know, cause and effect from the parents, you know. And if I did something wrong or something bad, I knew that, you know, I might get punished for it. So everything is cause and effect. I mean, when you're seven years old, or when I was seven years old, you know, cause and effect was real simple. You know, it made a lot of sense. So I, here I am. I, I, the Holy Spirit had just spoken to me in class earlier that same day. And now I'm, I'm at home and I want to find out what God is like. I want to find out what the Holy Spirit is like. And the reason is cause and effect. You know, I didn't want to do something that was going to make a man. <laughs> I didn't want to do something. I mean, even if I didn't know I was doing it. I didn't want to do something that, you know, was going to make a man. And then maybe he'd punish me for something that I didn't even know I was doing wrong. So, you know, I, and besides, I wanted to do things that would make the Holy Spirit happy. You know, he had given me an answer to a problem that I didn't know. And I wanted more. And I, I was thinking to myself, you know, I, all these problems and troubles in life, you know, he's, he's going to give me answers to all of them. If I know, if I know how to work with them. So I, I opened up the Bible, you know, and I turned to the first page, you know, creation. And, and um, you know, there's this big, huge Bible. The thing was this wide, and it was this tall, and it was this thick, and had gold ink on all the pa edges of all the pages. And big, heavy cover, you know, and, uh, and boom, you know, and I opened it up, and you find creation. And inside this Bible were these most wonderful illustrations from the very early days of the church. You know, these monks that that, that they, they would, you know, days and weeks and months and who knows how long, you know, in the freezing of winter and in the blistering of summer, they would go and they would take their quills and they would draw these elaborate illustrations, you know, that captured the context of, you know, what the story was, you know, to help people like me visualize you know what the story is all about. I'm so, so, <clears throat> so uh, you know, I opened the page one, the creation, and I'm starting to read. And I'm guessing the book was a King James Bible. That's what I'm guessing. I don't really know. We don't have it. It's been gone for decades and decades. And I'm really sorry because you don't find those illustrated Bibles like that anymore, or I don't anyway. I, so um, anyway. Um, I'm reading, and I think it's a King James Bible because the prose, the style of writing is like, what is this? What language is this? I don't, is this Latin? I don't know. Sure doesn't seem to be English like what I'm learning in school. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to read it. I'm trying to read it, you know, and I'm looking at the pictures, and I'm uh, trying to read it, and I'm picking out words. I'm picking out some of the words in the sentences, and some sentences I have to just, no matter how many times I read them over and over again, I, I can't get it. I, I just don't understand what they're talking about. And I'm picking out sentence bits of sentence here and a bit of sentence over there, and 
I'm trying to put it together and trying to get the gist and you know I'm looking for the I'm looking for the cause and effect that's what I'm looking for in these stories they all document cause and effect just like with my life you know if I make my mom and dad happy you know this is what's going to happen if I make them mad this is what's going to happen you know so one side is doing something and the other side is doing something in response cause and effect so I'm looking for the cause and effect it's really it for me it was just that simple the entire Bible was just that simple if I looked at the cause and effect and learned it and practiced it put it into practice so anyway you know I'm reading these pictures I'm reading these words I'm reading these sentences I'm trying to understand what's going on and it's written in you know as far as I'm concerned diambic pentameter you know and uh, it's not easy and after a while my brain was just full and when my brain got full and I couldn't take anymore you know I would shut it and I would just meditate on this and I because I really needed to know I, I really wanted to know what the Holy Spirit as a person is like I wanted to make them happy. I wanted to make them proud of me. Anyway. Anyway. So, now, um, my brain is full <laughs> of all this stuff. And I'm meditating on it. I'm meditating on it as hard as I can. I'm meditating on morning, noon, and night. In the morning when I wake up, it's the first thing I think about in the morning. When I'm at, during my day and even I, I'm at school, I'm meditating. I'm, th I'm as hard as I can. I'm trying to figure out what all this stuff, how it works. And that night before I go to bed, you know, it's the last thing that I'm thinking about. So, constant meditation on all of this, praying, you know. And meditation is prayer. And prayer is meditation. Don't ever let anybody tell you that they're different because they're not. They are one and the same. So, uh, that's, after days and weeks had gone by, something staggering happened. Absolutely staggering. After enough days and weeks, of intense meditation, you know, on the subject, the word of the Holy Spirit came to me again. Just like he did in second grade math class when he gave me the answer to my math problem that I didn't know the answer to. And he gave me the answer. What I was reading and meditating on in the Bible, he gave me the answer. He explained it. His word came to me again and explained what it means. And I was like, wow, this is two times now. This is two times now the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And gave me answers to questions that I did not know. And so, I thought that's great. <laughs> and then I grabbed my Bible, and now that I knew a, a little bit, you know, usually he answers me in two or three words. Seriously. No matter how complicated my question is, no matter how big my question is, usually he speaks to me his answers are two or three words. That has never changed. After 53 years, it's never changed. It's still the same. Occasionally, he'll give me an answer with four words. <laughs> but usually, it's just two or three words, and that's all he needs. That's all he needs to answer my questions. And the answer is so simple. I'm like, wow. Why didn't I think of that? Because earthly knowledge 
and God's knowledge are not the same. They are not the same. God's thinking is as high above man's thinking as the heaven is above the earth. And as you do what I'm talking about right now, and you start doing it as soon as this video is over, as soon as this blog is over, if you start doing, you know, grab your Bible and you start meditating on it and you, you flip it open to a page that sticks to your finger. And for those of you who don't know me, other people do know me. For those of you who don't know me, you take your Bible... I use the New American Bible, NAB. That's the one I use. You can use whatever you want. God works through all things. He can even talk to you through a television commercial, and we'll talk about that later. Um, you know, he can use everything. <laughs> and that's a sign. If you're thinking on a problem and a question, and you're walking by the TV, and some guy is doing a sales pitch, you know, for this and that and the other, and the words he's using, bang, like a crystal sapphire bullet into your mind, answers the question of what you were thinking about or leads you to an answer. That's what I'm talking about. And it probably has happened to a lot of people that are watching this blog right now. And they just haven't put two and two together. Those are the signs. Those are the signs that God can use anything to his advantage. So I'm taking the Bible, those of you who know me, and I'm closing my eyes. I'm asking God, what do you want me to learn? What do you want to teach me? You know, and I'm running my fingers. I hope you can see this. I'm running my fingers on the page till one sticks to my finger. And when you do it, I want you to test me on this. Test what I'm saying. If I'm lying to you, don't ever come back to my blog again. It's wasted, wasted your time because I'm a liar, right? And uh, lay the Bible down on your table. Lay it flat. Ask God, what do you want me to learn? What do you want to teach me? And run your fingers till a page sticks to your finger. How does a page, how does a page stick to a round fingertip? I've been doing this since I was seven years old. You know? It'll stick to your finger, and you flip it open, and you read. Recovery of the Lost Acts. I want to show you something. This is like my last year. These are the things that the Holy Spirit is flipping the Bible open for me to meditate on. These are the things he wants me to learn. Recovery of the Lost Acts, 100... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28. 128 times in the last year. Well, 129 times now. Along with these other things. Oh, yeah. And there's the other side, too. And these don't all come all at the same time. You know, I can go through a month or two where it's constantly just one. Then maybe it'll pop up here and maybe pop down there. So I keep track. So you're meditating on what the Holy Spirit wants you to learn. What he wants to work with you on. And it wasn't until, and you keep meditating on it until you get an answer. And I don't care if it takes two months, six months, or five years, or 13 years. Just maintain persistence in your meditation and your prayer, and eventually you will get an answer. And when you get the answer, you'll know it was from the Holy Spirit. And you just had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the Holy Spirit in real time, for real. And once you have one, you go to the next thing. And the next thing after that, the next thing after that, and you don't stop. It was 20 years of this kind. What, what I'm doing is strengthening the communication between myself and the Holy Spirit. And if you do it, you will strengthen that, that channel of communication. You'll strengthen that channel of communication. 
you know, this channel of communication is exactly like a muscle. And the more you use it, the stronger it's going to get. Trust me on this. Test me on that. Until it's like, you know, a high bandwidth communication channel. So, you know, in my very, very early days, something was happening to me that was so subliminal and so sublime. The Holy Spirit is so subliminal and so sublime. And it, it was so subliminal, so sublime that even decades and decades and decades later, you know, I'm still in awe and amazement. You know, I, I thought, you know, at the time when I was a kid, you know, I thought that, you know, I'm studying these words and I'm meditating on it because I really wanted to know the answers. And I'm thinking about the pictures and I wanted to learn the cause and the effect and, and I couldn't figure it out and I was working on it. You know, it wasn't that I was studying the Bible and it wasn't that I was studying the pictures and it wasn't that I was trying to, uh, you know, work the two puzzle pieces together. The really astonishing thing, the really subliminal thing that I was doing was that I was being constant in my prayers before the Lord. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. I didn't even realize that I was being consistent in my prayers before the Lord. Because it's only when you have this consistent, the persistence, the persistence of constant prayer before the Lord. You know, it's like a big, big bucket, a big bucket. I don't know, a thousand gallons maybe. Big bucket. You got to fill that bucket up. You got to fill that bucket up to the top. When that bucket is full with the consistency of your prayers, then you get an answer. And God is so sublime and so subliminal, this never changes. These still are the Bible days. Oh, oh, the Bible days were, you know, back when Jesus lived. These still are the Bible days. Jesus is still alive. God never changes what was, still is. The Bible days will not be over until after Judgment Day is completely finished. Then we'll enter into a new age. But for right now, what was documented in the Bible, God's cause and effect with all of his people, still is. Nothing has changed. People think it's changed. People think wrong. Nothing has changed. What was still is. Anyway, that's my part one on my early days with the Holy Spirit. And it's all about strengthening the line of communication, the channel of communication between ourselves and the Holy Spirit. This is how you do it. This is how I did it. This is how everybody has done it. God doesn't change. People meditate in the past. People meditate today. People meditate tomorrow. It never changes. God responds. When the bucket is full of consistent, persistent prayer, he'll answer. And you will hear his voice inside of you. Because our soul, that's where the Holy Spirit is. We can't leave without our soul, and we can't leave without taking the Holy Spirit with us. He's always there. We just got to open the line of communication. And I know this works. And if you do what I'm telling back, what I'm documenting, what I'm testifying, what I'm witnessing to, if you do it, it's going to happen because God doesn't change what was still is so this is all about how I wanted to strengthen the channel of communications between myself and the Holy Spirit you know 
and it worked. So, this is my life with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is Lord. Good news! Jesus is Lord. And God bless all of us. All of us. I hope this video is a blessing to you too. Amen.